Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am super excited about this opportunity. This is my first time telling my story in the public. My very first time. As a survivor of depression, I am 10 years free of depression and suicide. I stand here today, smile on my face, confident, knowing who I am, knowing how smart I am, knowing how intelligent I am, knowing that I'm amazing, I can do anything. That's the best feeling in the world. Like three words, I beat depression. 10 years ago, I was the person who didn't see none of that. I looked in the mirror, I didn't see I was handsome. I didn't see I was intelligent. I didn't see I was smart. I didn't see I can go to college and get a degree. I didn't see I was a future CEO. I didn't see any of that. I feel like my depression started when I was eight years old. When I was eight, I was a new kid in school and I was put in another class. Basically, it was uh, special ed. So I was put in another class. I remember one day in particular, I'm coming to the classroom and the teacher's writing on the blackboard. And she mumbled under her breath saying, oh, the retarded kids are coming, the retarded kids are coming. Oh my goodness. So me at a young age hearing that, with the look on my face of tears, I thought that was true. What you say to a child is very important. Your words can either build them up or build her up or break her down or break him down. I feel like I believe those words over and over again that play into my head over again. I feel like those words follow me into my adult life. I feel like there was a like a black cloud over my head. No matter where I went, that black cloud followed me. I went to church, that black cloud is still there. I didn't know it was depression. I went to school, that black cloud is still there. Like everywhere I went, it was still there. I remember one day in particular, 10 years ago, I'm on a train, I put these sunglasses on. As I'm going to work, I had the devil in my ear saying, okay, today's the day, you're gonna kill yourself. Today's the day that no one's gonna miss you, it doesn't matter. And I'm thinking, okay, unfortunately. So, I went to work, I act like I was sick, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go home and take myself out. I went home, I'm looking in the mirror with tears in my eyes, with pills in my hand, saying, God, this is it. I'm done. I can't do this. No one will miss me. I'm going to write my note. But for some reason, all I can hear is my mom's voice. Like, don't do it. For some reason, she called me. It's like, what's wrong? I come to find out, my close friends told her what was going on. That phone call saved my life. So as my mom is standing right in front of me, I'm gonna say thank you for saving my life and thank you for always believing in me. And I look over to my right, to my fiance, and thank you for being my rock, for always believing in me 100%. And there are certain keys I had to follow, I call it, way of change, pretty much. The, the, the keys of victory. And one of the first ones is affirmations. In my house right now, my fiance have affirmations on our wall. We glue them on our wall, saying you're strong, you're powerful, but sometimes the devil likes to come back and remind you what you've been through. Oh, you're depressed. No, I'm not. I'm stepping over you. That's right. That's right. Just saying, no, I'm not. I stepped over you 10 years ago. They was like, I'm trying to pull you back. Nope, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm stepping over it. Daily affirmations are very important. And one major factor also is prayer. Remember one day in particular, I had an honest talk with God. It was an angry conversation. I threw my hands up. said, God, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of crying. As a man, you feel like, I can't, who am I going to tell? As a man, it's, not okay to cry. It's not okay how you feel. God, what am I going to do? One day, I want to tell my story and bless other people. I didn't know this was going to happen 10 years from now. 
Prayer works. Talk to God. Have an honest conversation. Honest conversation. Like you're talking to your friend. You're talking to your family member. Prayer works. One factor also is surround yourself with good people. That's very important. Surround people who encourage you. Don't surround yourself with people who push you down on a regular. Don't surround yourself with people who try to pull you back to your past. You stepped over that. You don't need to be around that. Surround people with positive energy. People who are doing things. Another one is also find the outlet. Whatever you want to do, whether it's singing, poetry, whatever it's talking to kids, whatever anything you want to do, mine was going to the gym. That was my major outlet, mixed martial arts. That kept me out of trouble. That really helped. That was my, my major, my major factors. So I used to say to myself 10 years ago, why me? Why am I going through that? So I understand it now is God saying, why not you? I chose you. I don't want you to play in the background and be comfortable. I'm going to push you forward to be uncomfortable. So God was saying, this is what I need you to do. Get ready. Get ready to tell your story. I'm like, God, this is scary. You know? I ain't ready to do this. Nah, I'm pushing you. But God, I ain't ready. No, you're ready. Your story is about blessing other people. That's my goal. So, in closing, I would say thank you everyone for listening to me for my, my, my first time speaking in public. I want to say thank you for Nikki and Paul for letting me tell my story in the magazine. I want to say thank you for my two queens who are sitting in front row. I love y'all. Thank you.